Today in the grain market, soybean, soybeans finally rallied. Uh, the USDA did uh, raise their prices, uh, their price forecast for soybeans from 810 to 825, and that is uh, because the you know they're looking to the July report for the real uh, acreage adjustment. Uh, we knew that they didn't have enough data coming into this last WASDE report, but now the idea that we're going to get uh, a little bit better, uh, better information in July. I uh, gave uh, soybeans a little bit of boost and believe me, they needed it. Uh, you know, the crop was still planted late, even though, um, you know, it has a chance later than corn. Uh, there's still going to be some issues down the road. Now we're fighting with, uh, you know, the, the tariff war with China, as well as, you know, uh, Brazil ha has a big crop that has come in. So uh, those other things are kind of like fundamentally going to put a lid on, on a significant rally. But today that we are up double digits, I think just uh, uh, looks uh, much better for soybeans because they had been lagging behind corn and wheat's rally. Now corn did rise more today. Uh, that bullish WASDE report uh, did lift the futures and that follow through buying just tells us that the market's still looking strong and uh, the weather is, it was is certainly, the weather problems was certainly, um, I think, you know, offering a lot of support to the market. Uh, clearly, we're the beyond the point of no return uh, with the fields as, diff as you know, troubled as they are, that we are losing a number of acres. We're going to get some real numbers uh, come next month, but uh, until then, we know that uh, it's going to support the market and definitely have an effect on uh, the yields. Uh, now, so, you know, better, we better weather is ahead now, and that helps the crops uh, certainly right now, but uh, I think that there's no, no you know, uh, denying that it's going to be difficult at the end of the summer. Now, wheat was also higher, and I think that corn maybe have, has brought the wheat along. But the funds are still covering their shorts because funds were actually short all the way across the board from Chicago, Kansas City, and Minneapolis wheat. But there was a little bit of a tell today because uh, while uh, Chicago wheat was higher, Minneapolis wheat was not, and it was a little bit lower. So does that mean that that's going to start to lead the, the market lower uh, once things start to slow down or once the momentum starts to slow down? It's possible. But the ending stocks in the soft red wheat were the smallest since uh, 2013 and 2014, and that's kind of positive news. That's why it gives it a little bit of, of lift. Overall, though, there's a lot of wheat supplies out there, and uh, at these prices, we're not really competitive around the world. So um, th those things are kind of like in the minds of a lot of the traders. So we're going to watch that closely because, you know, the higher we get, the more that we're, we're going to have a big uh, uh, gap that we could fall. So we have to be very careful. But certainly volatility is here to stay. And uh, I expect that we're going to see the markets bouncing around an awful lot. And, you know, um, if the corn does continue to go higher, I think it's also going to drag this wheat along and uh, really create a big chasm here. So uh, watch out for that.